Here's the beams where the 20 foot sawmill track will be mounted. Got the manual here. And uh, that's the project. Delivery of my sawmill did not go according to plan. Woodland Mills advises they ship on 18-wheel trucks and asked if there was any problem with delivering to my house. Well, yes, there is. There's no turnaround above my house for several miles. So we arranged to have the saw delivered to a neighbor's house. I was supposed to be notified by phone 24 hours in advance of delivery. Tracking said the sawmill would arrive on a Monday, but I'd received no call. And I knew they weren't going to call me on Sunday, so I didn't expect to saw before Tuesday. My wife and I were sitting down to breakfast when the neighbor knocked on the door. My sawmill was there, sitting in his driveway. He hadn't called me because I had neglected to give him my new phone number. My sawmill had been handed off to a regional carrier, and apparently they didn't get the memo that said I should be notified before delivery. So instead of transferring this 900-pound crate directly from the shipping truck to my pickup truck, it was on the ground. Now I have an old back, my neighbor has a bad back, and neither one of us should have been wrestling a 900-pound crate. Even broken down, the heaviest part weighed approximately 400 pounds. I drove down in my pickup truck with a utility trailer which is much closer to the ground than the bed of my truck. And together, we wrestled the entire saw bit by bit into the trailer where it sits right now. So what we've got down here, everything laid out in its approximate position. I've counted out nuts and bolts, make sure we have them all and they're the right size. And this also includes an extra section of track. This one on this end. To accommodate 16 foot logs, that will not be my first log. So, time to get out the tools, carefully read the instructions, and put this erector set together. So, Okay. We have begun. Snug, not tight. Until they're all in and square. The uh, rails need to be 26 inches apart outside edge to outside edge. There's enough slop in the bolt holes to vary that 3 16 of an inch. So you gotta check before you tighten it up. Day one of assembly is complete. Feet are not fastened down yet. I'll do that tomorrow and then I'll have to make sure the rails are perfectly straight. Minimize errors early and you won't have accumulated errors late. You might ask why I'm using nails instead of screws. I don't have. 72 stout screws. I do have stout joist hanger nails. I figure if a house floor can hang off these things, so can this. What I'm doing is I'm nailing both ends down, then I will sight from end to end and make any lateral adjustments required to try to get this straight from end to end. I 
I've got a string spaced out equally at both ends. It is 11 sixteenths to center of string here, 13 sixteenths, 13 sixteenths, 14 sixteenths, 12 sixteenths, 9 sixteenths, 11, 10 or 11, and 11 sixteenths again. So it should be 11 sixteenths. Anywhere it's not, I need to adjust it. Now we will double check level and thoroughly tighten feet and then the track will be ready for the sawmill. The sawmill of course is not yet ready for the track. It says to um, six to eight inch tall blocks in front of the crate, bend the front of the crate down and lay the cardboard wall over it. Carefully rotate the saw head down on the cardboard spot and then slide it out of the crate as shown below. Crate can be discarded. My question is, is after you have fold this down here, put this 400 pound thing on top of it, how the hell do you get the crate out? I'm going to do it a little differently. I just realized, after I set up my 8 inch blocks, this assumes it's still sitting on a wooden pallet. So, I'm going to tip it over onto the pallet, because there's no way I can tip it from deck level up onto an 8 inch blocks. I don't have any 6 inch blocks. So, it's going onto the pallet face down. at all so far. Now we can get the crate out. There. Now we can put it together. Why did I shift this under tension? Well, that's interesting. They tell you to release blade tension anytime you're not using the saw. You get flat spots on here if you leave it under tension. It's shipped under full tension. That's no tension. With some of this showing like that. This is proper tension, that is operating tension. When this is driven in to the point you no longer see it. So I don't know why they ship it that way, but I will ask them.
there's an adjustment there. Okay, Let's see what's next. Now I've got a problem. I have no idea what tighten fully means. I've seen no mention of torque specifications yet. Okay, I gotta do something about this pallet now. tippy but uh, ready for the next step. Now I'm supposed to stand it up. By tipping it forward tipping it forward part is going to be easy. Crash landing I'm concerned about. is down. It's also about 50 feet from where it needs to stand up. I can do this on two short lengths, temporary wooden track. 
leapfrogging one ahead of the other. One thing I'm going to suggest to wooden mills is they label the bags of bolts and washers and nuts. Put the uh, wrong size in here. It's harder and harder to get out. Okay, now what? Back to the book. You need to have some bolts in hand. half inch of rain in the night. Glad I covered this up. It's time to get things unpacked. Be ready to go to work. Seems like we need more parts. There are no more parts. Well, perhaps we're almost done. Okay. Finish those bolts. All these up here. Which is going to be a struggle to get the first couple in. These two started okay. These two will be a bit of a struggle. Put that one the washers. That shows washers all over the place. I got plenty of these. I'll put washers on. Okay, washers everywhere. Now what? Lift mechanism and cable.
doesn't say what nut to use, but to crank on, this one fits, and it is the only one of its kind. And being it's the only one of its kind, it must be the correct one. We go around this. Okay. Short cable end goes straight down. Okay. Short and long. Long comes down and comes back on the rear pulley. The short is on the other pulley. Now what? Connect the shorter end of the lift cable to the bolt in front of the left front post. That would be that bolt there because that will also be four. Okay, you need some more slack. I do not want to drop this. However, saying that probably guarantees it. Oh, good. Okay, now does it say anything about washers? It says nothing about washers. Gotta be kidding. There is no place to swing a wrench. This is fastened solid. Okay, I see how to do this, I think. No, I don't. My ratchet box end goes up to 15 only. And here we need a 17 or a 19. I do believe I have a box end that big. But I'll have to go to the basement and find it. Well, I do not have box in wrench, 17 millimeters, and 11 sixteenths would probably hold that. This won't go in there. It has a short enough throw, but it will not go in there. So I need to go back and get a box in wrench of some kind that will fit that. Just as I thought, at 11 sixteenths. Fits this, almost no slop. The question is, can I even get it started? You know, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm holding it on with the tip of my right social finger, and spinning it with that, and holding it with that. Can't get, I can't turn it far enough to get another bite. Well, I can that way, twisting the the open end. Anybody's got an idea for a better way to do this? And listen, not that I plan on ever doing this again. This could become a frustrating operation here. Get back here. See if we can do it. Okay, that's as far as I can get that on there, given the depth of the jaws of my 11 sixteenths, or 17 millimeter. Uh, but that's close enough, by God, I hope.
So what we're up to now is putting in the hoses from here to here, but uh, I'll be removing that. Why don't I just look at the directions on the adjustable blade kit? That will tell me whether I need to stop now. The instructions for this adjustable blade guide suggest that I uh, don't want to install that bottom end right now. So I'll install the top. Okay, one hose and the blue fitting here to let's see, to the vertical said. I'm going to want to try this in sub-zero weather. As with most things, good force, I believe. Yeah. Actually, ha-ha, this stays in there. This plugs directly into it. Okay, glad I didn't throw that away. Now we're up to the log scale bracket. Okay, we'll see how all this goes together now. Okay, this has to fit in here. It doesn't quite. Probably the thickness of the coat of red paint on that blade. But, let's see if we can make it fit here. I'm going to go to the basement and work on this. So, put this in a vise like this. Laid a small flat file on it, pressuring it towards these edges, and use the edge of the file. And now, this fits flush. Okay, we got that on there. Uh, <clears throat> silicone lubricants required in this operation here. And yesterday I had a hell of a time getting this post in. I had to drive it with a hammer. Uh, even after loosening these adjustable bushings, the only uh, silicone I had is for um, indoor use, but uh, as soon as I sprayed it on here, it smoothed things right up. I'll get the proper kind next time I'm in town and uh, grease this up properly. Right now, we've got to put the handle on here, and that would be this handle. It can either go up or down. If you've got a trailer mount where it's all up high, you want it that way. I, however, want it this way. And what do we need to use for that? M10 by 70. Whatever those are. There's only so many left, so uh, I think I'd know what an M10 was by now, but I don't. Okay, I found the 70s. The only 70s I got left, so there must be M10s. Right there in uh, their own little bag. Well, that sure doesn't look right, does it? That's because we got it in the wrong place. Yep, this is where I want mine. At least until I change my mind. Here's another one that's going to be tedious. Oh, that's not right.
juice. Nope, that's not gonna show the bowl here. That's this one. Washer in here, washer in there. Is there nowhere near wide enough? Almost. A little bit more. That'll do it. You're probably thinking the same thing I am. It does not look right here. Oh, there's adjustment at the carburetor end. Good. Loosen this screw, pull out all the slack, the cable, tighten the screw. And now, when we squeeze the throttle, it opens the throttle and also opens the lubrication water valve. So you don't have to turn on the water and have it dribble all over between cuts. And you don't keep forgetting to turn it on for each cut. I don't know why they all don't do that. Very simple, a huge improvement over having to turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. Okay, I think we're cl getting close to the end here. Running out of parts. Can't find a manual. Here we go. Now here's a surprise. Tighten the four wheel bolts. Oh, I know where they were loose. You'd have never got the rest of it together with them tight. Well, I guess that looked like about a 30. 30 it is. That's tight. These aren't, but the wheel still turns. Sawdust removing cables. A nice touch. Okay, three more. It's complete. All these head bolts should be only hand tight. I've got them a little tighter than that. I'll loosen them up once we get this on the track. The wheel bolts are tight. Everything is on except the tail end of the lubrication hose, which I'm saving until I put on my adjustable blade guide. I'll wait till it's on the track to do that. And uh, so that's it. I am out of parts except nuts, bolts, more bolts. That's empty. Washers, washers. So you got a lot of bolts and washers. These make me a little nervous, but uh, there's no place to put anymore. Oh, wait. There's this. Where does this go? Well, now I know why I have leftover bolt. That's it. I, I turned two pages here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, we've got a problem here. I have the four long bolts for the upper. Oh, look at that. That's much too big. That can only mean one thing. Somewhere in here, I put in a bolt that is too small. I'll just go uh, check them all, 
see which one is out of place. It's worse than I thought. I just found a place where I did not put bolts right there. Now look what we have here. More short. They okay, were good there. There should be another one of these somewhere. But let's get these on first. You may recall yesterday when I dropped a bunch of uh, bolts here. There's the missing big one. Right down here where I can't quite reach it. But that, that solves the mystery. These two, and these two. Okay, now, what's left? Washers. All of these, I have no idea what those are for. So with no extra nuts, they just got to be extra bolts. Okay, now, now I'm out of parts. Except for the option I haven't put on yet. One more thing. The uh, power meter. Very simple, works on vibration. Now, I think it's finished. The only leftover parts I have are washers. I obviously did not put them everywhere I should have. So now all I have to do is get it from here. there. I would really like to get it on the track tonight, but 